My name is Evan and this is my video presentation for the Robocop Singapore Open 2020. A short intro about myself, this is actually my first year doing robotics but I have already participated in two previous competitions, namely the iCool Challenge early this year as well as the recent Robocop Asia Pacific. Coming from first steps, Standard Rescue definitely has many differences in terms of the map layout and the additional game element of super objects. I would like to introduce my strategy with, the, with these three questions that I considered. Firstly, how do you make the robot avoid the edges of the map considering there are no walls for it to detect? Secondly, how do you increase the efficiency of the robot's movements? And lastly, what is the optimum strategy for collecting and depositing objects? The main methods and strategies that I used, which I will be explaining in this presentation, are going to address all of these questions. Obviously, the task mission is to gain the highest possible score through collecting and depositing objects. The robot should avoid running into traps or running out of the map since respawning or resetting the score would waste a lot of time. The robot should avoid obstacles and swamps as this would either slow down or hinder the movement of the robot. And the robot should navigate to and collect super objects when they are generated as doing so would gain the most points. What I did specific to this preliminary round was to determine the optimal route for the robot to take for collecting the RRBBCC set by considering the spawn areas of specific colors. Looking at the many walls of the map, uh, relying on random movement to collect the objects would be far too time consuming, so coordinate targeting to collect each color was necessary to get a decent score. I will be explaining these concepts in further in depth later on. I used vector maps to influence how the robot moves around the map. What I did was, I took a 2D image of the map, and I used computer vision, in this case OpenCV, to classify each pixel in the map into a type of landmark. So saying like, this pixel is a trap, this pixel is a deposit zone, etc. Then each pixel of these, in each of these landmarks would then be assigned a vector that repels the robot. So for every possible position that the robot can be in on the playing field, we can then sum up all these vectors from all these different landmarks to obtain the overall vector that would then influence the robot's movements around the map. This way, the robot is able to avoid obstacles and the edge of the map without having to use the onboard sensors, since it is repelled by the vectors. The pic these pictures below show how I generated the vector maps, starting off with the initial image of the map, the second image is classifying the pixels into the different landmarks, and the last image is the vector map itself, which is visualized using the HSV color space, where hue represents the angle and intensity of the color corresponds to the magnitude of the vector. The modularity of the vector maps further optimizes the robot's movements around the map and reduces time wastages. Since each landmark has its own vector map, how much the vector from each landmark contributes to the overall steering rate can be varied or even completely excluded, depending, of, depending on the state of the robot, like how many objects it is holding, and the status of the game, like how much time is remaining. What this means is that you can prevent unnecessary maneuvers, for example, if the robot is not carrying any objects, it will not be repelled by traps since it is not necessary to avoid traps. In this situation, the robot can then save a little bit of time by cutting across the trap instead of going around it. That was one component of steering. The other component would come from coordinate targeting, where given a target coordinate, the robot would use trigonometry, specifically A102, to calculate the angle of the target from its current position. So, for instance, if the target was one pixel to the right and one pixel above of the robot's current position, it would then calculate that the angle that it needs to head towards is 45 degrees. Essentially, this steering component would then direct the robot to orient itself in that angle and head towards that general direction. This component has to be combined with the one from the vector maps to obtain the overall steering rate of the robot. This is so that the robot can move in a direction that makes progress towards the target while still being able to avoid any obstacles in the way. There are fallbacks for the vector maps for when the robot enters a signal loss zone. Since the robot would be unable to retrieve its current location coordinates, it would be unable to use vector maps to determine which direction to steer towards. This is also just in case the robot strays too close to a trap or wall. For instance, if the ultrasonic sensor detects that the robot is too close to a wall, additional steering will be added to the overall steering rate, pushing it away from the wall to prevent a collision. And if the color sensor were to detect a yellow trap warning, it would override everything else and basically ensure 100% that the robot avoids the trap. 
Below is a flowchart which roughly describes the thought process behind generating the overall steering rate. Moving on to the scoring strategy, it basically revolves around depositing a set of RBBCC every deposit, so we can get that nice bonus points and also generate super plus objects around the map. How I achieve this is to collect only a maximum of two of each color and only deposit when the robot is holding all six objects. How to speed up the depositing process is to use coordinate targeting to direct the robot towards the deposit zones instead of having to rely on random movement for the robot to find it. One consideration that involved quite a bit of calculation was in determining how to cycle between depositing sets of RBBCC and when to collect the super objects. This is because collecting a super object would mean that the robot can no longer deposit a full set of RBBCC, meaning that a super plus object would no longer be generated after as well. So we determined that the points maximizing strategy was to uh, deposit three to four consecutive sets of RBBCC, uh, piling up the super objects around the map, and then after that, collecting all of these super objects in one go. As seen from the table below, strategy two, which was what I just mentioned, is able to basically score more bonus points in the same number of deposits. If the robot encounters an object but is unable to pick it up, maybe because it's fully loaded or it's already holding two of that color, the robot will then save its coordinate to an array instead, so it can use coordinate targeting in the future to collect it. Uh, this is also how the robot can keep track of the locations of super objects, which allows for us to do the stacking up strategy like I mentioned in the previous slide, instead of having to collect them immediately. In the end game, when time is running out, the robot would stop aiming to collect a full set of RBBCC since time may run out before the whole set can be collected, and to just head for the deposit zone instead, uh, just to guarantee that it can sort of cash in the points for the objects it is already holding. Overall, I feel like the strategies I employed were all successful in improving the performance of the robot. Uh, the efficiency of the robot moving around the map is increased, meaning that less time is spent moving from point to point, and scoring is optimized as well, meaning that for every deposit, we score basically the maximum amount of points that can be scored. As a result, uh, our points approximately doubled from around 1000 without any strategies to around 2000 with the strategies. For future work, I can implement probability maps, which would entail splitting the map into a 3x3 grid, uh, and in each segment of that grid, we keep track of how many objects were collected, as well as which color is the predominant color, basically the majority. So uh, using this, the robot can then favor going towards segments of the map that have a lot of objects, or have objects of the color that the robot needs to complete the set of RRBBCC. So this would basically reduce the amount of time spent searching for objects to collect, which can help to increase the maximum number of deposits possible, and making the movement a lot more efficient as well. I learned a lot from participating in RCAP. Like I mentioned at the start, regular rescue has a lot of differences with first steps rescue, meaning that this time around, I still had to learn a lot of new strategies and techniques to apply to this competition. Secondly, as I have very little experience in C, throughout the course of programming the robot, I have had to pick up a lot of its quirks and features, meaning that I am now more familiar with the language, which is great. Uh, last but not least, while using vector maps, I was able to familiarize myself with the OpenCV module in Python, meaning that I am now better equipped to use it in future projects, whether just uh, general image and video processing, or even high-level implementations like machine learning projects that use visual data sets. So in this sense, I would like to tell my fellow participants to not fret so much about the result of your robot's runs. In the end, what is the most valuable is the knowledge that we acquire through the course of the competition, so that we may come back stronger in the future. Thank you for listening to my presentation.